G'day, welcome to my channel Bootlosophy. If we haven't met before, my name is Tech. Now, before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I work and live on, the Wajuk people of Nungabuja. Today, I'm going to uh, pick some of the most comfortable boots in my collection to have a look at. So today, I'm going to pick uh, some of the most comfortable boots in my collection um, that we want to take a look at and I'd like to discuss. Uh, there'll be some surprises and there'll probably be some disappointments. So we'll go and see uh, how it is and you can tell me what you think in the comments below. Um, now to be fair, I'm going to try and break these into three categories of boots. So that'll be the low price end range up to um, uh, uh, US $300. Uh, then I'll look at the US $300 to $500 range boots. And then I'll look at $500 and above, just to break them down so that uh, we're comparing apples with apples uh, when we can. Um, I'll also leave the links to where you can buy them below. So let's start with the lower price range boots. That's um, a price range of around um, uh, up to Aussie 450 Aussie dollars. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's the lower end in heritage boots, particularly they're coming out of the US. Uh, that takes them up to about US $300. And yes, I, I know it sounds a lot, but trust me, that is at the lower end of the range. And I think you can get some reasonably good footwear there. So um, let me look at the three that I've chosen that I think are my uh, three most comfortable boots in that range. So I've got the Thorogood Classic 6-inch Mock Toe is uh, top of my list. Then I think I have a bit of a surprise, and this is the Thursday Boot Company Diplomat, which is also a Mock Toe. And indeed, it might look actually quite similar, but you can see that this is a more sleeped up model than this sort of um, uh, high volume toed uh, work boot model. And then the third one I think might be a bit of a surprise. This is an Indonesian handmade boot from Fortis Boots. Um, this is a collaboration boot that I made with them. I'm not sure if you can see that Fortis Bootlosophy collab uh, logo. Uh, it's in an Indonesian rough out leather. It's on a Vibram 2021 sole. And yes, all three of them are wedge soles. And uh, that might be coincidence, but it also, I think, might actually point to the fact that uh, having a wedge sole with a reasonably flat bottom uh, creates a reasonable form of support for your foot right throughout. So um, let's take each at a turn and then uh, let's try and discuss uh, why I like them. So I'll start with the Thorogood Classic 6-inch Mokto work boot. Uh, this is an American classic. It's got very soft oil tanned leather, uh, tumbled so that it becomes really soft, full grain leather. Um, it has it's a, it's a Goodyear welted boot, uh, 360 degrees Goodyear welt. But the welt is, I think, a rubber or a plastic welt, so um, perhaps may not perform as well in the long run. Um, it's uh, designed as a mock toe boot with this moccasin style stitch across the top of the vamp. A uh, reasonable amount of uh, volume in the, in the profile. And then this Vibram Christie wedge sole, which is reasonably grippy on, on uh, flat surfaces uh, and is oil and, um, and moisture resistant. In fact, this is actually Thorogood's version of the Christie uh, sole, which is meant to last about 20% longer. The comfort in this is born of the fact that it's a reasonably um, uh, wide last, except you have to size yourself quite carefully in this, I find, because with the um, mock toe stitching, I find that if I actually size them up to my normal boot size of uh, an 8D, they can actually be quite painful across the toe. So these are in fact true to size at 8.5D. Once I dial the size in, uh, the comfort factor is helped by the fact that there's a fairly solid uh, footbed, flat sole, so there's plenty of arch support. There is a shank in there in the middle of the, the sole between the, the heel portion and the uh, ball of the foot portion. And they have their really quite very comfortable uh, 
double density uh, internal footbed, which is removable. And I find that just gives me really fantastic um, foot strike comfort when you're actually standing and, and walking around these. The reason I like these Thursday Diplomats, and by the way, um, do I have them here? Yes. It's a very close call between these and the Thursday Captains as for comfort on foot. Now, I chose the Diplomats over the Captains because I think the toe box is slightly wider and more anatomical, uh, and the Captain toe box is a little bit more almond shaped to be sleek and service boot like, with a little less volume uh, right at the toe. So I had actually quite a few problems breaking in the, the captain. It took me about two weeks because of the um, toe cap and the stitching across the toe cap that created a bit of a, a, a tighter sort of uh, feel across that portion of my foot. Both of them, however, have amazing uh, uh, footbeds. They both use uh, leather, cork, and then they have a pour-on uh, uh, midsole which creates that um, softer effect. And the, the actual sock liner is also nice and soft. I find the last of these suits me really well because it just curves into my, into my toes without necessarily causing any pain. The heel cup I find on these is also um, actually quite firm. So it keeps me trapped in there without a little bit of uh, heel slippage that I get in the thorough goods. The third boot I have in this lower price category is this Fortis boot. Um, it's a style that we call the Strider. It's a collab with me. I designed this boot, put it on the 2021 wedge, uh, used local Indonesian rough out leather. I can tell you, it, it looks large, it looks wide, um, and the volume uh, looks quite high. But when you put them on, they really fit really well because the manufacturers get you to measure your feet in several places, and then they uh, adjust the last to fit your, your foot. And if they forgot to forget to do that when you, when you mention them, uh, when you talk to them, make sure you ask them about the volume and whether there's any uh, uh, you know, different shapes to your foot. I find these comfortable because they're quite light, despite the eight inch height. Uh, the leather is not particularly thick, even though it's very sturdy, being a rough out. Uh, it has a double layer uh, veg tan leather sole, but that doesn't make it heavy. It has a steel shank inside as well. Uh, and I forgot to mention that so did the diplomats. The last um, fits my feet perfectly might look a little um, round to you, uh, but it's certainly not chunky and, and sort of uh, too work booty. It's light. The uh, 2021 sole from Vibram outsole is nice and soft, so it cushions the effect really nicely. Okay, so let me turn to uh, uh, mid-range price boots. And I'm gonna introduce, <coughs> This one might be a surprise in terms of my choosing it for comfort. This is the Bordon Tucano. Uh, it's from Bordon, Colombia, which is a Colombian uh, boot maker, reasonably new, started in 2020. They, they make uh, group MTOs uh, as their model for purchase. Uh, this is built on their own last. It's a stitch down construction. So you can see um, that the front of the boot has the uppers flared out and then stitched down through the midsole and the outsole, double stitching. It's quite a firm uh, waxed suede leather, so it's not really soft, which you might think doesn't lead to comfort, but actually with the full boot lining, uh, grips your feet so that you feel quite snug and comfortable uh, being held snugly. The width of the last is really nice. It suits the ball of my feet. The round toe also helps. This is, of course, a service boot, jumper boot style boot. Um, and the fact that it's got a Vibra Montagna sole, it's got a uh, veg tan leather sole, and it's got some slight uh, a foam padding in the sock liner uh, on the inside. One of the reasons, in fact, the main reason why 
I like these as a really comfortable boot, particularly for outdoor hiking, is the snugness of that really firm leather uh, providing support for your feet, uh, as well as the thickness of the uh, Vibram sole and all that uh, uh, cork and leather on the inside with a steel shank. The next one in this mid-price range, I'm choosing uh, an RM Williams Gardener. Uh, costs about $650 Australian. Uh, it's a, an RM Williams Chelsea boot, but unlike their Comfort Craftsman or their Craftsman has a round toe, so you're much more comfortable uh, in the boot itself. It fits my foot really well. It's very snug, uh, keeps, you can see the, the curve of the heel so that your heel locks in and it keeps your ankles reasonably tight uh, with these goring panels. On the inside, it's quite a firm uh, leather footbed, but it's that, that um, classic leather cork leather uh, and then rubber outsole combination. The outsole is a thick, um, uh, out, it, it looks like a Vibram outsole, and I, I think that in fact might be uh, a Vibram outsole branded for RM Williams because this looks very much like the V700 uh, V bar outsole. That combination of rubber and snugness uh, and the rounded toe of the last makes this a really comfortable slip on, slip off boot. So the third one is going to be interesting. It's uh, a Grant Stone diesel boot. Now, I have quite a few pairs of diesel boots. They're not all the most comfortable. Um, and I have to say, although I do like their leather sole boots, those are probably the least comfortable because they have the leather outsole, they have a leather um, midsole, and despite all the cork and leather on the inside, it's actually quite hard to break them in, uh, break the sole in so that you can actually uh, walk in a flexible fashion. These, in their day-night mock-up uh, outsole, uh, break in really well. The leather is a Horween, uh Essex leather, uh, and it's soft enough, even with that um, full lining on the inside and, and making it a reasonably thick boot. Despite all that, it grips the foot really well across the ankle, across the instep, around the uh, uh, ball of the feet, and the uh, traditional uh, leather cork, leather rubber uh, sole construction means that you can stand in these all day. Perhaps not as good arch support as the RM Williams Gardener boot, which is constructed in such a way that this little cantilever here provides a little bit of arch support. Um, this is, this doesn't tuck in as much, but the arch support on the inside caused by uh, the slope of the uh, sock filler on the inside kind of makes up for that. So uh, a, a, one of my most comfortable boots that I like to pull on every now and then. Okay, so what about expensive boots? Well, when it goes to boots that are um, in the above uh, US $500 price range, I've chosen only two. The first one is my Grail boot, the White's MP boot. This is an overbuilt beauty. Uh, super thick sole, quite hard to break in, but also, on the contrary, gives you a firm uh, flex when you're walking in it. Solid heel cup, uh, a reasonable last, it grips your feet, maybe a little long if you're taking this modified Barry MP last. Uh, a little bit long, but but snug in the on, on the sides. Um, super thick leather, Chrome XL Natural. Uh, stacked leather heels. Everything inside is leather. There is no steel shank. It's actually a leather shank, and that you can see it causes this bow here as they build up layers of leather to fit into your arch. Why is it so comfortable? Number one, it fits. The last is, is great. Uh, number two, it's firm. It keeps your foot secure so that you're not uh, moving around in it, which is one of the things that can make your foot um, tired across the day. Uh, the 
all those layers of leather on the inside, once you break these in, they're like custom made for you. And all that leather inside shaped on the inside uh, to create that, that um, push into your, into your arch. Just gives you a hell of a lot of arch support. Fantastic for walking all day, indoors or outdoors. Uh, fantastic for arch support if you're just standing around lecturing or, or facilitating meetings, which I've done both of. Um, super grippy outsole and also, uh, uh, you know, it's not a hard commando sole, but it's not soft either. So that's a good um, uh, uh, shock absorbing outsole. Um, and alongside that is the Viberg service boot. This is in the 2030 last. Some people don't like the 2030 last because it may be a bit too arm and toe for them and they prefer a sort of rounded one with maybe more of a toe spring to allow them uh, to fit into the boot. I find the 2030 last uh, suits me really nicely. It's again another uh, snug boot so it grips your feet very nicely. Uh, it doesn't feel as overbuilt as the White's MP where you, you pick that up and it's definitely heavier. And you wonder why the heaviness, because it doesn't look very different. It's all in the sole construction. This is less so, but don't let that fool you because, again, it's all leather on the inside. Uh, it doesn't have that bow created by the leather um, arch support because all that arch support is on the inside. I can't explain it. There's a lot less construction in the sole of these boots, but they are at least as good as if not better in comfort than the White's MP boot. Now, I want to give an honorable mention to the Alden Indies. Recently much maligned for its materials, I understand that there is a reason for every piece of material that Alden uses in it uh, in, in technical terms. It may not suit lovers of leather because it's not all leather on the inside, but I understand that Alden actually have a reason for using the materials that they use. Um, the reason that this is an honorable mention, this is on an expensive side boot, by the way. Uh, the reason this is an honorable mention is this is one of the first expensive boots I'd bought. And when I put them on, it was a revelation. I had lots of the lower end mid range boots, you know, everything from Grantstone to Parkhurst, uh, many different styles, helm boots, uh, uh, Thursdays, all sorts of boots, Chippewas and so on, uh, Red Wing. But when I put these on, it was a revelation. This is what a boot should feel like, I thought, on the very last. Uh, the Thomas heel has this little funny cutout which provides extra support to the arch apart from the uh, uh, shank. And one of the secrets, I think, is the way this cantilevers outwards so that it pushes in into your uh, arch system so that the leather itself cradles under your arch. It's a design wonder. So in summary, those were the most comfortable boots that I have in my collection, at least for my feet. You'd have heard me talking about sizing and lasts all the way through, and particularly that toe shape, which I like, the round toe, but you can also get reasonably comfortable boots that are more almond shaped, like uh, I think you remember the R.M. Williams Gardener. might have a round toe, but it was quite uh, almond shaped up until the actual roundness of the toe. Um, so you'd have heard me talk about lasts and sizing and the quality of the materials, and I think that's what makes the boot comfortable. The design of the boot in terms of how that last shapes under your, your arch uh, getting the right size so you're not slopping around in it or it's too tight, but it needs to be snug. Um, uh, uh, ensuring that the last suits your feet. I mean, if you have uh, a feet that start off with uh, a narrow heel and go out wide, no point getting a, a, a Crockett and Jones style, sharply sleek kind of last um, to put on your feet. What I look for is to make sure that you get the right sizing. Uh, Make sure that you have a look at the last uh, and compare it with other boots that you have in a similar shape last to see if that suits your feet. Uh, take a look at the materials that's particularly under your feet. There is, of course, 
a kind of balance between instant comfort, like in the Thursday boots, where with the pour on and the foam, they're instantly comfortable, or those like the White's MP, where you have to fight a bit to get your feet molded into the boot, and then it's forever comfortable. But the materials will help in either of those two scenarios, whichever is the one you want. I would recommend that you get your sizing right, you check your last is correct, and then you make sure that you understand what's under your feet in the boots that you want to buy if you're looking for excellent comfort. So there you go. I hope you like that um, soiree into what makes comfortable boots and what I find comfortable in my boots. If you liked it, don't forget to click on like. And if you're not subscribed, why don't you? It's over there. Um, if you subscribe, I have lots more boot videos coming that you might find interesting and will at least be entertaining. So until then, you take care and I'll see you soon.